Well, we have returned home from our trip to the Midwest, and this is what we have came back to. Smoke and low visibility in the state of Oregon. I totally forgot this is what the western side of the United States looked like while we were gone, but one little reminder we did have, and I thought this was nuts, on our way out to the Midwest and on our way back, we were going through states where there wasn't even really wildfires. It was smoke that had drifted from our direction out that way. And I'm talking about like Kansas at the Lakeside Speedway or in Missouri or Nebraska. So that was unusual seeing the smoke all the way out there. But anyway, welcome back to today's video. If you guys are new here to the YouTube channel, my name is Tanner Holmes and I'm an 18 year old 360 and 410 sprint car driver from here in Southern Oregon. Now I grew up here in the Pacific Northwest and I pretty much love racing anything with four wheels on it. And along with that, I like to document my experiences right here on the YouTube channel for you guys to ride along with me. But as as I mentioned, we have made it back home to Southern Oregon. You know the saying, there's no place like home. I'm a homely person, so it feels great to be back. But we spent 21 days out on the road traveling for 10 races, eight different tracks. We met a whole lot of fans, met a lot of new people, and saw a lot of cool facilities. And even though it was so difficult, I mean, you guys saw the highs and the lows of the trip, the competition that we were up against running with the All-Stars, ASCS, and Knoxville 360 Nationals. So pretty much putting it in light terms, it was difficult and tough to run up front but anyway I have a fun video planned out for you guys today with a couple of things to share with you updated in the shop as we're actually kind of getting closer to our next speed week which starts next week and that is going to be with Carly behind the wheel but more details for that later in the video and in the next video that I have planned out to come out in a couple of days but let's head on inside we have something to unbox so a couple of days before we showed up back here at home after Knoxville 360 Nationals, this box showed up at the doorstep of our race shop and it's from Butler Built Seats and we absolutely love their products. This is not like a sponsored segment. We bought this seat from them ever since I got involved in sprint car racing. This was just the option that we went with. And I'm sure as many of you guys know, it is much tougher to get product nowadays for a race car, whether that's a part, whether that's safety equipment like a seat, because many companies are still seeing effects from the pandemic. And that's not even just in the racing industry, but it's hard to find employees obviously nowadays or lack of materials, whatever the case may be. My family's business has even seen effects from the pandemic still to this day. In the case here with Butler Built, which like I said, it is not their fault. It's just the times nowadays. Uh, we ordered the seat in January and now we are just getting it here in August. But let's get this thing open and check out my new seat. Well, here's a fresh look at my new Butler built seat that we just pulled out of the box. This thing is absolutely gorgeous. Butler built makes some of the nicest seats in the business. It's definitely one of those companies when you purchase from them, you know you can trust their product, especially in such a dangerous sport like racing, where we literally put our lives at risk. To give you guys some details on why we decided to order a new seat, so right now our operation currently has two full containment seats that we could run in our sprint cars. One of those seats is in Carly's Limited Sprint, the other one is right behind me in my primary car. And the seat that is in the 22C, that is the first ever sprint car seat that we ordered back in 2017 so I first started out with that and then I passed it down to Carly because she got started at the same age that I did and we were very similar in size the second seat that is the one I am currently running now and we ordered that from Butler in probably the middle part of 2019 and it was pretty much the exact same seat as the one we had ordered previously but just with a little bit of room added in certain areas so our second seat, like I said, was ordered in 2019, and now this is our third seat, which we ordered here in January of 2021, and it is an exact copy of the seat that we ordered in 2019 because that one fits me perfectly. So nothing is different on the measurement side of things, but there is two other small adjustments to the seat. I'm noticing Butler has a little bit of a different style up here that's thicker and gives more support for the driver. You can kind of see in the background the other seat. Now you can check out this one. The other change, and we requested this from Butler, is that they trim up the bottom down by my legs because that helps us get it in and out of the race car easier. Our seats are already hard enough to get in and out because we run halos at the top, so we just had them kind of trim it up here at the bottom because we found once we did that with one of my other seats, then it slid in much easier and wasn't as much of a pain. And I'm sure if you guys have ever had to fight that, it absolutely sucks when you're scratching up the powder coat, you're trying to slide it in, you have to take the race car apart, so that is just a mess, and we kind of found our system on where our seats need to be so we can get things done efficiently in the race shop. But that is enough about our seat. I wanna move on and share with you guys the next thing.
Well, I figured we'd just jump right into this one. Check out my second new suit from Pit Stop USA. If you guys saw the Knoxville 360 Nationals video, you saw the suit that they supplied me with that I was wearing for both days. And that one was black with some blue and a little bit of red. And then this is more like some of the classic ones that they've done before with just the blue, red, and white, the Pit Stop USA colors. And one thing I'll say right out the gate that I really enjoy about this suit is not only do I get to represent Pit Stop right here as the main logo, but they also let me put all my other sponsors on it as well. We got Bell Helmets, Ferguson, Durango RV, OMA KTM, QRC, Earth It Environmental, and all those same logos are on the other arm. And then up top here, we have Fast 4 Media, on-site screeners. And then the other two logos are Next Gen Def and Lafarge. So I think the two things to say with all of this, the first one being when I am wearing this suit, it is going to be hard to miss me walking through the pits, which I actually like that. And then the second thing is thank you so much to Pit Stop USA. They started supporting me in 2020, hooking me up with tons of safety gear, making sure all my needs have been met in that area. And then this year, once again, coming through with two fire suits. And not only do they specialize though in safety equipment, but recently they've expanded into being a parts supplier. So if you need some new equipment for your race car, definitely go check them out for that area as well. I am definitely sad that I'm not gonna be able to wear this thing this weekend at the Southern Oregon Speedway. And that'll be the final topic for today's video as I give you guys some details on this upcoming week of speed. So now we're at the point in the video where I can make some sense of what the title and the thumbnail means. So Carly has Oregon Limited Speed Week coming up and it actually starts tomorrow. That's the first night of racing at the Southern Oregon Speedway. Then they have Sunday off and then they go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, which makes seven races in eight days. And if you guys have been following along with our busy schedule, I've got to run a ton in the past three or four weeks. And Carly's last race was on July 10th, which was actually her first sprint car win of her career. So she hasn't got to race for a month, but if you guys kind of know how our family team works is if I'm racing, we're all going with me. And then if Carly's racing, we're all going with her. We're not at the point where we're splitting up yet, which I think is something we're definitely gonna have to do in the future, but as of right now, this is kinda how we're running the program. So this is gonna be Carly's first speed week actually behind the wheel. She's obviously been many times when I've been racing and she's been crewing on the car, but I'm excited to go along with it, give her advice, be there every single night, document it here for the YouTube channel, and I think Carly has some serious potential to run up front each night, contend for a speed week championship, and contend for wins. Now, originally, the game plan a couple months back was for both of us to run this speed week it'd be very very difficult tiring having two cars but we were just going to give it our best shot but unfortunately with some of the motor issues we've had with our limiteds we were not able to get our second one back just because we can't get parts for it right now and we only have one engine and carly is definitely a priority when it comes to the limited she needs all the laps she can get and especially after winning a race after only nine starts she definitely needs to be out there for this speed week so that is why i'm not running and why i made the title in the thumbnail talking about having the seat in my hand because i just got the seat I could drop the seat in someone else's race car if I could find a ride, but I don't have a ride myself, meaning my race car that I have. I have a car, but I don't have a limited engine for it. So hopefully now the whole situation makes sense. And I think that's one thing that is unfortunate about the Pacific Northwest. And it's not really anyone's fault, but just how things have kind of went over time, there's not really any car owners in this area. So with my situation, not having an engine, I can't just maybe call up a couple of people and say, hey, you know, I'd be interested in driving your race car. There isn't really like car owners looking for drivers there's just a lot of drivers that own their own stuff and race on a local basis or try to travel a little bit throughout the area which is completely fine but like I said with my situation I would love if someone just called me up and said hey uh, come drive my stuff for the speed week that would be so much fun but that is not how life goes sometimes but like I said I'm excited to go along with Carly she's made so much progress in under 10 starts and I think a good goal for Carly is just to work on being consistent she's going to be going to some new racetracks she's never been to before and she's gonna have to figure it out quickly but I think if she just just works on putting together a whole night, qualifying well, getting through her heat race, making the redraw, putting herself up front to start the A, then she's going to have a chance to go for a win every single night. So even though I'm not racing, I'm looking forward to getting it all started tomorrow night at our home track, the Southern Oregon Speedway. We're expecting a great turnout. Then we don't race Sunday, and then all the action gets back started on Monday at the Coos Bay Speedway. Then we go to Cottage Grove the next night, then we'll lamb it, then Sunset Speedway Park, and then up to Elma, Washington, the Grace Harbor Raceway. That will be our first trip to that facility this year. So as you can tell, our racing season has not ended yet. You guys need to continue to follow along with our journey. This time, though, instead of it being the 18T out there on track, it's going to be the 22C. See you guys all tomorrow night at the Southern Oregon Speedway. Deuces.